So my last security breach theory video got a lot more attention than a lot of my other stuff on my channel has lately, so I figured I should keep riding the pony. I still have a lot to say about security breach and a lot of questions that we can answer. I also want to make a slight amendment to my last video. As looking through the ending, I kinda insulted MatPat more than I meant to. When I criticized game theory, I didn't want to criticize MatPat specifically or anyone involved with his brand but more so the effect that large channels have when it comes to building theories. People believe them just because they're popular. Hopefully, I can change a bit of that. So for today's prompt, I want to talk about Patient 46, since that's probably the most popular mystery going around right now, and I want to talk about Glamrock Freddy, since he's one mystery I think people are just waiting for the DLC to kinda solve on its own. In fact, let's start with Glamrock Freddy. Why not? I have words to say. So for most of Security Breach, Glamrock Freddy comes off as a pretty nice guy with no ulterior motive for helping out Gregory. He cares about his friends, thinks of them as confused, not in the right state of mind, and he, if anything, displays a near supernatural level of care for what amounts to a Chuck E. Cheese that can leave the stage. And I think a lot of us were fine with this. We suspended our disbelief and let the story continue. And continue it did. But there are hints throughout that Freddy is different than the other animatronics in some way. For starters, he's not affected by the glitch trap virus, at least not while he's fully conscious, and at least not as long as Afton is in the room. Then there's a second win that he gets during the stage lift segment of the game. How exactly does a robot get a second win? There's Freddy questioning his existence when he enters the endo rooms, and then finally, the infamous I am not me monologue. I've played this in another video before, but here I'm gonna play it in its entirety, so enjoy. I know what this is. I have been here before. She brought me here. I found myself for the first time when I cleared the path. I did not want to, but I had no choice. Now I have a choice. I have changed. My friends are here. They are so angry. You done? Alright, well clearly something's up with good old Fred here, so I think we ought to look under the hood. The first thing I asked myself was, does this mean Glamrock Freddy is possessed? And I kinda have to say, probably. I can't say with 100% certainty that he is, but he probably is. One game theory video I actually really enjoyed and kinda believed was in MatPat's analysis of what happens during Security Breach's starting cutscene. You know, the one where Freddy starts freaking out. In that video, he deciphered the information being flashed on screen and showed that the virus that was attempting to take him over essentially just didn't have enough space because something else was already in there. This explains why even when Freddy is knocked down, he's still unaffected by the virus. It doesn't have room inside his memory to work. Something else is already using it up. But this something could be anything, including something Freddy was built with. Different ways to sing happy birthday, a language center in case he needs to speak French to a kid, vacation photos, but the fact that all of the other Glamrocks are completely taken over leads me to believe that it's something else. But here's the tricky thing. If there is a spirit inside of Freddy, then who is it? And where's the body? Usually when these possessions take place, it's because of a dead body in a suit. But Gregory gets all up in there, there's no body. In fact, we see all over Freddy's body during this game's open heart surgeries, so unless he's hiding about 220 pounds of flesh in his legs, which may actually be possible, those things are huge, I don't think he's been stuffed. Regardless, there's clearly someone possessing him. So let's briefly look at any and all possessions in the series that haven't happened as a result of stuffing. Well, there's Springtrap, which is technically not a stuffing, but his corpse is still inside the suit, so probably not the best example. There's the puppet. We know this one isn't a stuffing because of the conditions in which Charlotte, the spirit, died. And that's it. Every single other possession in this series is the result of Corpse being inside a robot, which really makes you wonder about Ennard being possessed by Elizabeth and then being inside Michael, kinda implying that Michael had his sister's dead body inside of him. Regardless, there is one thing that compares Charlotte's possession to pretty much every other possession in the series, and that's proximity to the corpse. Using this as a hard and fast rule, the body needs to either be directly touching or nearby to an animatronic, we really only have a couple candidates, and that's anyone who died in the Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place fire. Seems obvious, right? 
Well, sorry I had to walk you through all that, because I don't really need anyone coming in and throwing the name Jeremy Fitzgerald in my face. Or Fritz Smith, I guess. So let's cover everyone who died at the pizza place. Either literally, or their animatronic body burnt up in the fire. These include Michael Afton, Henry Emily, Elizabeth Afton, William Afton, and Charlotte Emily. The hard part is that literally all these are pretty good candidates. With the exception of maybe William. William seems to be... busy. I also think we can eliminate Elizabeth, since Elizabeth has pretty much always been on Afton's side, especially when we last met her. That leaves us with Michael, Henry, and Charlotte. Michael has at least a little evidence backing this up, since the Michael Afton room exists, but I have a bizarre feeling that this isn't going to be the case, and these are two unrelated things. Henry doesn't really have any evidence backing him up, aside from the fact that he and Freddy kind of talk similar. And Charlotte might actually be it. Consider this, the Pizzaplex has no puppet, but each staff bot resembles them. Even the Nightmare staff bots bear a distinct resemblance to the Nightmare own. And considering that Patient 46, or Vanny, would have been responsible for Glamrock Freddy becoming possessed, them using this evil version of Charlotte as their primary henchman would kinda make some sense. But even more convincing to me is that the last time we saw Charlie, she wasn't exactly displaying herself as the puppet. She was Lefty, a bear animatronic. So is it possible that the spirit is Charlotte? I think that it's very probable. But what else is there? Well, let's look at that speech again. I noticed some similarities between it and some lines Charlotte has spoken in the past. Call me crazy, but I'm noticing a pattern in how he talks here and some lines the puppet says in Ultimate Custom Night. For example, my friends are here, they are so angry, confused. I compared this to the line, the others are like animals, but I am very aware. In this instance, we have Glamrock Freddy and the puppet establishing a sort of consciousness over the other robots. The line, I can protect you, reminded me of the line, the others are under my protection. Here we have Glamrock Freddy assuming this role of a protector, just like the puppet did. I didn't really find any similar lines Lefty has spoken to Glamrock Freddy, but I feel like there's some evidence here for me to confidently say that Glamrock Freddy could be possessed by Charlie. I know a lot of people default to Michael, but Charlotte has controlled the puppet before, was at the scene of the fire, the last time we saw her she was a bear, and her existing dialogue bears many similarities to Glamrock Freddy's. Just to double check, I also ran it against Michael's speech from the end of Sister Location, but I didn't find many similarities to Glamrock Freddy's although I'm willing to admit that I am likely to be biased towards my own personal theory. But then this begs the question, why would Vanny or 46 want Glamrock Freddy possessed by Charlotte? And if this really is the case, why doesn't Glamrock Freddy remember being Charlotte? Is it a result of the Glitchtrap virus, or something else entirely? There's a lot of unanswered questions here, but I do feel like Charlotte is the most likely candidate for who is possessing Glamrock Freddy. Little sidebar, I only thought about this during the editing process for the audio, but I think I realized why Vanny and 46 would probably do this to Charlotte, for the same reason that Henry did it to Lefty, to contain the soul of arguably the most dangerous spirit when it comes to foiling their plans. And in doing that, they made sure that Charlotte wouldn't even remember that she was Charlotte, so that she wouldn't have any reason to go against them. I think that is a pretty good reason as to why they would do this and put it inside Glamrock Freddy, because Glamrock Freddy is a next generation lefty. So there's theory one. Theory two is all about everyone's least favorite shadowy manipulator, Patient 46. Similar to Glamrock Freddy, finding this character's identity is going to come down to it either being someone brand new or an elimination list, so we might as well get started. Alright campers, so the first qualification you'll have to meet is the size qualification. Patient 46 in the tapes is described as being of unusual size with a regular chair not being adequate for them. They are either too big or too small. So I'm sorry, Michael Afton, William Afton, Henry Emily, Mrs. Afton, or any other adult living or dead. The next qualification is age. Patient 46 is talked to very often as a child. So campers, that eliminates all of the Springtrap line, which doesn't really help since we already eliminated Afton, but whatever. 
The only other significant characters that this eliminates are Vanny and Vanessa, which also doesn't help since Patient 46 is definitely a separate character who is in communication with the double V. And the final qualifier, and this is the big one, is gender. Although Patient 46 is not referred to by any particular pronouns in the English version of the game, in the Italian translation, Patient 46 is referred to by effeminate pronouns. Although it's not been confirmed in the English version of the game, which is of course the native language the game story was written in, we're gonna stick with this as evidence since it's not been patched out or changed since launch, which most likely means it's intentional and can be used as evidence. So we're gonna go ahead and eliminate every single male character remaining. And our remaining suspects who fit every qualifier thus far are Susie, the spirit inside Chica, Elizabeth Afton, otherwise known as Baby, and Charlotte Emily, the puppet slash lefty. However, there are a couple of what I would call semi-qualifiers. These are qualifiers that may or may not be true about 46, based on what the therapists find out or have already known about them. Let's start with dear old dad. Bill. Now of these three characters, we know two of their dads, one of them is Henry and one of them is William, a name which is often shortened to Bill. This would seem to indicate that 46 may be Elizabeth, but hold on. Let's look at family history. 46 apparently had a loving household and childhood, and although this doesn't necessarily eliminate Elizabeth since we don't know what her life was like before her death, but it does make it seem less likely since William was was most likely a poor father figure. But you know what? That doesn't even really seem to matter because I have in my pocket here some pretty doughy proof that patient 46 is Elizabeth Afton back from the dead. Fuck. If we look into 46 and Elizabeth's behavior, we start to notice some similarities. Let's start with the most obvious and arguably the most important, that being that 46 is described as a manipulator using Vanessa slash Vanny to her ultimate goals. And that is exactly the kind of behavior that Baby displayed in Sister Location when she was manipulating Michael. And the way they manipulate others by making them pity her is also exactly the same. You might think that this is a leap, but one therapist actually mentions that 46 had been lying to her about her childhood. She was trying to make it seem like she had a rough childhood growing up when she really didn't. I feel like this is purposely left there for us to connect back to Sister Location. I mean, the tape room itself looks like Michael's living room that we see in that game. I think we're supposed to read this as Baby's behavior, but that confused me to no end. If this really is Baby, then how is she back? In what form? Is she a child again, or is she still baby? Is she a robot, or something else entirely? And then I got to thinking, what brought her back? Who brought her back? I can't envision baby coming back on her own, which led me to a sort of sidebar theory. In another of MatPat's recent videos, he brought up that someone has restarted Fazbear Entertainment and manipulated things like the Pizza Plex's location, hiring Vanessa as chief of security despite her lack of experience. And I think he's right to question this. And while MatPat is convinced that this mystery antagonist is baby, I have an alternative theory. You know the FNAF movie? how the casting was recently announced, Mary Stuart Masterson is playing an unnamed female villain, which is curious because we don't really know anyone who that could be. Given that she's of similar age to co-star Matthew Lillard, who is William Afton in the movie, might I suggest Mrs. Afton? If Mrs. Afton is a villain in the movie, maybe she's a villain in the games. In fact, maybe she's the one doing everything in her power to resurrect her husband's company and, well, her husband. Steel Wool has mentioned before that they want to bring things back to the roots of the series in the next game, and that they also want to give William Afton reasons for doing the terrible things that he does. Maybe his wife has been there all along. Maybe she's the one who pushed him to do what he did. That might sound like a leap, but I'm guessing that that's where we're gonna end up. And that's assuming one big thing, that this Patient 46 thing isn't just one big red herring. I have a sneaking suspicion that nobody has been right about who 46 is, except for the people saying they're a brand new character. But hey, that's just a theory. Another lame joke that I and many people before me have made ad nauseum. So that's gonna be it for me this time. I have so much to say about this game that I literally don't know where to start when I write these scripts. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you want to stick around for what comes next, be sure to subscribe. Almost 70% of my viewers are not subscribed. It's absolutely free and you can opt out whenever you want. So click that big button that says subscribe on it and give it a try. That's all out of me. Peace.